Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 71. Today we're going to be talking about the Aurora Borealis. We're going to be taking a look at the full moon eclipse in Libra. People will still be feeling the energy of that. Uh, we finally have some announcements to make. So grab a cup of tea, put some incense on, get comfortable and we'll explore The Witching Week. everyone welcome back thank you for being here thank you for watching i'm ren i'm the cemetery witch and every friday we get together for a simple cup of tea a bit of a chin wag we look at what's been happening the week previously and what's to come and we talk about the sort of the turn of the wheel the seasons the weather um, and just general witchy and pagan subjects. So it's so lovely to have you here, thank you. If you are new to the channel and you're new to The Witching Week, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, it takes two seconds and it really helps to show my channel to other people. And give it a thumbs up as well, this video, because that really, really helps. So what has been going on this week? Well, we're finally moving out of March, which I'm really, really pleased about. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate March. This March has gone really, really quickly, um, but I'm so glad we're moving out of it. I, for I nearly forgot, didn't I? Let's do tea and incense. I've had such a busy week this week. I have been up probably since about half five every morning. I've been waking up super early. I'm not sleeping well. We have got a lot going on at the moment. Um, and some of those things will be resolved this weekend. Some of this is just like nervous energy, but it means I haven't even had a chance to think about like, oh, what incense am I gonna burn today? What, I'm gonna, what am I gonna drink today? I've just done it. So we are still burning the Zam Zam angel style incense. Um, I like this because it is much longer. I said this last week, and when you're really, really busy, you and you, and you want to burn incense constantly, which I do some of the time, you want to be able to put a stick on that's going to last just a little bit longer. Um, it's got quite a long base as well. So because it is so long, I just usually snap part of the base off and then it fits on well it, even then it's still overhanging my my incense burner but yeah so we're on the angel star zam zam and we're we're on the fish food we're on the peach tea looks like fish food in the bottle um it's actually all right it's actually okay um and we've got so many teas and coffees and things in my cupboard it's driving me mad i'm trying to work through them and like get rid of some of the bits in the cupboard because every time I open the door they they all threaten to fall out so yeah it's it's been very busy so yeah what was I saying about March I don't hate March I really really welcome March really really welcome the spring equinox but like I said last week there's that weird period in between March and April so you've had the spring equinox and you're all excited that it's going to be warmer and lighter and brighter and very often it isn't. We have had the odd nice day. It's also a beautiful day today, but yeah, it's still, it's like we're in limbo. It's like a weird in-betweeny sort of time and I don't really enjoy it. I think I'm like eager to crack on, crack on with the year, like I'm ready to be warm now. I think that's what it is. So yeah, we're getting rid of March this week. Um, Although I read, I did read last night that we are possibly going to have some snow. They reckon 132 hours of non-stop snow in April. Now that might, that may well happen in Scotland and it wouldn't be unheard of to have snow down here, but I just don't see it's gonna happen every year. It doesn't matter whether it's like before winter, during winter, or just sort of on the tail end. We always have these articles and they're always in papers like the Express and stuff like that. And they're always saying that this freak weather event in relation to snow is going to happen. And this happens constantly, every single year, multiple times. So I don't really believe now when, when I see in the papers or when I see that it's advertised in those sorts of papers that we're gonna have this freak weather event invo involving snow because it very, very rarely pans out. So, but apparently that's gonna happen somewhere around the 2nd to the 4th of April. So in this coming week, but I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. It could happen, April. I think we have more snow in March and April than we do 
the other months, um, I, I think because you do have those warmer fronts of air coming in and meeting cold air, it is much more likely to have them at this. I mean, March can be bitterly cold as well. Um, it's It's been mild, I guess, March. Uh, it's gone past in an absolute whiz. I have just, I've had my head down all week from sun up to sundown, trying to get some things finished, but we'll we'll get onto that. We'll get onto that, but still in the uh, in the topic of the skies, the aurora, the aurora borealis. Now we've spoken about this on the Witching Week before. On Sunday, the twenty fourth, so Sunday that we've just had, my phone pinged and I had an alert, and I'll put I'll put a picture up now. Um, this is an app which tells me when there is solar stuff going on because it's solar activity that causes the aurora borealis and it's to do with like charged um, particles that come that are sent towards the earth in a storm and they, they only measure hour by hour because it fluctuates and the reading that we had on Sunday round about I guess it was like half six seven ish it was it was dark but it wasn't like dark dark it was getting dark and it's the highest that I've ever seen it nearly up to 1100 it was and the highest I've seen it is getting up for 500 so I've only had this happen the last six months and I guess over the winter period um I don't actually know when the season is where it could happen I mean it's something that usually we don't see down here at all but because of all the recent solar activity even in the Midlands even down south even down like Devon and Cornwall um I believe I know Wiltshire has there's pictures of Stonehenge with um, the aurora behind it but it's really really unusual for anyone basically outside of maybe northern England but definitely Scotland to be able to see it so yeah I've had this app for about the last sort of six months I think it's like September to March is the sort of the time where if you're going to be lucky to see it that's when it will be don't quote me on that I, you know I need to read a little bit more about that but we got an alert so it's always on a Sunday it's always on a Sunday when you know, my husband wants an early night and he's thinking about the week ahead because I don't really want to go out on my own in the dark somewhere. I've been feeling a bit vulnerable because of my heart condition. And yeah, it's just the sort of thing that I don't really want to do on my own because I'd like to share it with someone. You know, if I get to see the Aurora. Now he has done at least six winters in Norway with his previous career. So it's not, probably not so much of a big deal for him. He's seen the Aurora Borealis lots of times, but I haven't seen it at all. And I've become slightly obsessed with it, I must admit. I dream about the Aurora Borealis a lot, to the point where when I had COVID, I think I was a bit delirious because I woke my husband up and I was like, can you see it? It's wonderful. And I realised I was just looking at the wall. So <laughs> I'm a little bit obsessed with the Aurora Borealis. And I've I've come to realise that I'm very much a sun witch rather than a moon witch. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love the moon. Incredible, beautiful. I'm so glad that we can see it and we can look at it and we can talk to her and all of that. But I think I'm very, very connected to the sun and the penny dropped in the week that perhaps this is why I am so taken with the Aurora Borealis without making that conscious link that it's, you know, connected to the sun. Anyway, anyway, so I could feel myself getting more and more excited. We had crystal clear skies and I mean crystal clear before when we, we attempted to have a look when I had... Uh, I had really bad COVID um, and that was the last time where there was the opportunity and the app was showing like nearly 500 in terms of the disturbance. Um, we did drive up to somewhere but we didn't go late enough and it was a little bit cloudy as well but this time it was crystal clear and I was clock watching, I was getting really fidgety, I was thinking yep this is going to be it and it just kept banging out readings um and then we got to the sort of the crucial time where it would have been perfect which is around about i suppose about quarter to nine to about half past ten is usually considered a good window for us this time of year if you get an aurora alert and you know what just before i was about to head out the door 
boom, it dropped down to nearly nothing. So, oh, I guess it's like, I'm trying to get my neighbor sort of interested in this and sent him the details of the app. And I was like, look, look out the window, it's crystal clear. You know, this, this is gonna be good. I've never seen it this high before. And then boom, gone. Um, yeah, and, and I said to him, I guess it's like tornado chasing, I think. It's one of those things where, you know, you probably have to jump in the car now and boom, you're off. So lots of people on Sunday night, myself included, were waiting with bated breath. And then after all the excitement, um, that just fell away. And it always seems to be a Sunday night, always seems to be a Sunday night. I don't know what that's about. So keeping in the skies, the next day, well, the 24th into the 25th, depending on where you are in the world, for us it was the 25th, so the Monday, we had full moon eclipse in Libra. So I thought I would talk a little bit about the astrology surrounding eclipses. It's something that I'm getting quite into astrology, very, very tentatively. I'm very much at the beginning of my journey. I've got this wonderful book. I think I've shown it before on this channel. It's like a Collins gem book on astrology and it, it, sun signs, star signs in particular. And it is so, so accurate. And that that's always kind of been a consideration of mine, you know, just how to a T this book seems to describe all of the people that I know and love, including myself. But I've never really had... I don't know, maybe the time or maybe the inclination to want to explore that a little bit further. Um, but in recent times, and I think as well, putting together the Witching Week and um, just being a lot more aware of astrologers and finding some astrologers I like and all that kind of stuff, I'm really getting into it. Um, I'm not, again, I always stress that, you know, we can't link everything to astrology. But at the same time, it does seem to be fairly accurate and it does make a lot of sense a lot of the time. And now that I'm watching out for these events, these um, astrological events, they do seem to tie in an awful lot with what's going on. So not in a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy kind of way. You know, I'm very much um, in the middle. Um, I'm prepared to be a sceptic, but I'm also open as well. So, and you know, there is the whole as above, so below, what happens in the macrocosm happens in the microcosm and vice versa. You know, these our, our world is a strange and interesting place and we're all interconnected and everything, can, you know, connects to something else or affects something else. So I'm not, you know, I'm not sort of ignorant and pig-headed and stubborn and think, well, you know, it can't possibly have effect. But equally, I'm like, yeah, astrology can affect certain things, but we also need to look you know, other things that are going on as well. So for example, even if there is a particularly challenging time in astrology and everybody is finding things quite difficult, we also have to look at what our life is like on planet Earth. So there are lots of systemic things that are affecting um, how everybody's feeling right now and what's going on. So we have to take those really, really into consideration. But anyway, this um, eclipse, and I'm talking about it this week, even though it happened Sunday into Monday, Monday for us. Um, I'm talking about it because the energy of that is still present and the repercussions of it are still present. And it is part of a bigger story. So it's like the second part of um, a larger story. So there was an eclipse in Libra, although this was a solar eclipse, but there was an eclipse in Libra back in October 2023. So how long ago was that? October, November, December, January, February, March. So we're talking like five, nearly six months ago. Um, and yeah, this has been quite a challenging time. But what I don't want to do is call eclipses chaotic like everybody else. And maybe I don't know enough about astrology yet. And maybe it's just semantics, but I think things can be challenging without calling them chaotic. And I think that eclipses are challenging because they they uncover things. They allow us to see what's lurking below the surface. We see the things that are have otherwise been pushed to the margins. We see things that are in the shadow. We um, we just sort of see the true nature of things. The true nature of something or someone is revealed. So it's almost like the curtains are pulled back a little bit. 
they yeah so they help us even though people consider them to be chaotic they help us to i guess find acceptance of these particular issues so you know for example if there is someone whose true nature has been revealed to you perhaps they were like it all along but you just couldn't see it yourself um yeah the eclipse it not only does it reveal that but i guess it, it does that to to help you it does that to help you or to help you help yourself so again there's there's choice in this there's always choice in everything so because it was a full moon eclipse in libra obviously we're looking at themes of like balance and justice liberation and definitely redressing balance so um in, in as much as like when you think of the scales there's there's two things isn't there there's two sides to the scale there's two sides to something so what needs to be removed from one side to balance out the other or what needs to be given to the other side to balance out the other so whenever you're looking at the the um like full moon eclipses the eclipses then you want to be thinking of it in terms of that particular sign and also you want to think about your own birth chart you know do you have libra in your chart if you do that that will be the area that will be the house that will be the area that this is related to so those themes of redressing balance and justice and stuff like that yes they are libran traits they're libran characteristics they're things that are associated with libra but that might be in relation to home or relationships or careers or jobs or you know so obviously um eclipses will perhaps they'll be different for everyone i would say there is this overarching theme of you know things being revealed um it's also suggested that you don't manifest at this time and i'll tell you why in a minute but also they can affect you even if you don't have that particular sign in your chart. So even if you don't have any Libra, this eclipse will still affect you, will still affect you. So they change the direction in which they, we are going, we are traveling. So this is why they can be big news. You know, they can completely turn your life around. They signal, you know a change in direction and this isn't something that just happens boom on the day of the eclipse this will be something that will roll out for a while so sometimes it takes a while to see the effects of eclipse this is my understanding of it so on april the 8th we have an eclipse in aries that's a solar eclipse and then april 1st we have mercury re retrograde i can never say that word we have mercury retrograde so there's a lot going on at the moment so i thought i would having read about the eclipses i know a little bit about them anyway but i thought i would do some research and see what do people think that you should or shouldn't do during an eclipse and i've come up with my own list so taking a ritual bath or shower is always a good idea you would set your intention for that ritual bath or shower or you could do a spell i mean obviously a ritual bath or shower is a spell can be a spell um but your goal whatever magical working you're doing you want the intention ideally to fit in with the themes of that particular eclipse the, the sign that it is in so in this case it would be things like rebalancing um, which fits in as well with kind of having a bath doesn't it or a shower so you can get as creative as you like with this um, or yeah or you could do a spell for justice you know that would fit in really really perfectly with this time as well um, be prepared emotionally I would say just be open to the idea that during a, an eclipse things might come to light things might be revealed um, you might have to face things that you previously didn't want to but I would also say be prepared for the good as well as the bad you know be emotionally prepared things that are revealed don't always have to be bad and I think it's really important that we don't get into this mindset of like eclipses are good or bad you know it's the same with mercury retrograde just see how it goes just have an open mind don't rule anything out but also don't hang on to the astrology too much like i've said before um i think 
it will probably take me many, many years from now and I really should start to make notes and I haven't. And that's something actually that I think I'm going to try and do is to start to make some notes about what's going on in the lead up to and after these sorts of events, because I am noticing patterns when I bother to take notice. Um, I mean, I'm not much of a cosmic witch, um, but yeah, there's definite patterns forming. And I think my opinion has probably changed towards astrology from when I was a younger woman. So yeah, really, really interesting. Apparently you should read, so any sort of um, astrological information that you're looking at, you should read for your rising sign as well as your sun sign. Apparently they are equally important. They have an equally important role in your life. So you should be looking at both. Um, I've said before that there is a program where you can get a really quite a good birth chart for free. It doesn't involve you using your email address or anything like that. I will put a link down below for that. I found it to be really, really good. And the basic reading that it gives you. So it actually gives you not just where all your planets are and things. It actually gives you a description of what planets and what house and how that affects you it's actually really really i think comprehensive for a free one so i'll put a link down below um but yeah take a look at that your sun sign and your rising sign so be prepared for a pivot so yeah i guess again just be emotionally prepared be be prepared that things might change for you and i think it's probably a really really good time to ground yourself as well um yeah so that's my little list i don't consider them to be good or bad i don't, can't remember if i said that as part of this list or just chatting before but yeah don't don't sort of get hung on this idea that an eclipse is bad or an eclipse is good you know just see what plays out see what plays out how do you find eclipses i would love to know are you taking note of this kind of stuff are you really good at astrology is it a massive interest of yours the more I delve, the more fascinated I've become, like I said before. And they always say that you shouldn't manifest or attempt to manifest something during an eclipse. And I've, I've found out the reason why finally, but apparently it's because eclipses twist energy. Um, so again, this idea of a pivot and actually they align you. They align you with where you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be going. So in essence, the universe is actually already doing the work. You don't need to do a spell for something it, because you're you know if that's meant for you then you're going to be heading in that direction anyway so not as sinister as i've kind of heard everyone you know talking like oh can't manifest during eclipse or like you know tut 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 like actually it just seems that you know it's just a time where you can sort of relax a little bit because the universe is going to sort things out so very very interesting so on the 1st of April, we have Mercury retrograde, we have Easter Monday, and we have April Fool's Day. So I did do a little section last year on April Fool's Day. Um, as you all know, it's a very, very famous day for playing jokes and hoaxes on people. And we have had, as far as we know, we've had April Fool's Day for quite a long time. There was an association made in the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, where he refers to this day and foolishness, but this is disputed. This is in 1392, so an incredibly long time ago. But the first mention in British um, sort of recorded history is John Aubrey in 1686, where he refers to Fool's Holy Day. And we know that in 1698, a little time after that, on the 1st of April, some people were tricked to go to the Tower of London to see the lions being washed. So I don't know any more about that story. I will try and find out. I don't know what happened, whether their trip to the Tower of London, they were safe and they returned from that, whether they paid, whether they traveled a long way, I don't know. I have a million questions on that. So when I get a moment's piece, I will see if I can find out a little bit more about that. But we also have, da, 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 we have an announcement about April the 1st. So finally, the Cemetery Witch is launching as an entity that is bigger than just me creating content for you guys. Um, I absolutely love doing this. Obviously, I try and give you educational content. 
I have had to sort of move with the changes a little bit with Instagram. Instagram doesn't favour educational content as much as it did before, so I don't get seen, which is frustrating. Not because I want to have loads of followers, it's because my calling in life, I feel, is the craft, and that is making the craft practical, accessible, getting rid of the fluff and the, the scary sort of part of it. And so I want to be seen by as many people as possible. And you guys can obviously help me with that. Um, you know, likes, shares, comments, sharing this page, chatting with me, engaging with me, just watching, all of that. And I really, really appreciate you. But obviously it takes a bit of time. It does take up a bit of energy and um, it doesn't pay the bills. So if I want to continue, to offer this to the world and to support other people in the witchcraft community, then I have to move a bit differently within it to be able to continue. So you guys are actually getting all of the scoop right now here, Friday. I'm releasing a little bit each day from Monday, from the 1st until the 5th. And I'll be letting people know in my free newsletter on the 1st as well what's going on. But you guys are getting the scoop here first. So we have, from Monday, we have Patreon, we have Etsy, we have merchandise, we have courses, well, one with some in the pipeline, and we have a new website. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about each of these. I'm really, really excited to share all of these with you. I really, really am. And I have put my heart and soul into this for the last, I'd say, four years. Um, I had the idea four years ago that I wanted to offer a bit more back to the community in terms of connecting people and showcasing people and things like that. And just yeah, giving a little bit more back and um, creating a, a sacred space, a community that was away from, you know, like the community we've got on YouTube and Instagram. Yes, it's lovely. Yes, it's wonderful. Yes, it's beautiful. And it's full of amazing souls, but you do actually get some not very nice people as well. And some people that just cause trouble and just, yeah. So I want to create a lovely welcoming space where it's a lot more private and I can share a lot more of myself with you um, without worrying about prying eyes and stuff like that. You know, we all have, we all have lives and we, sometimes we have complications. So yeah, it's just, I just want to create a really, really homely space where people can always feel safe to interact because sometimes people message me and they do want to share something but they perhaps feel that it's not quite the place on Instagram to do that perhaps or maybe on YouTube. So I'm hoping that you guys will be really comfy um, in the patron space for example. So I'll tell you all about them, I'll give you a quick rundown and then we'll do some cards. I thought I'll keep it fairly brief today because this might take a little while. So Patreon, if you've never heard of it, it's basically a subscription service, service, not surface, service. And it's, it's just like being in any other space, except that only people who pay to be there are there. So it's very private. So there are four tiers. We have the Bone Witches, we have the Angel Witches, we have the Mausoleum Witches, and then we have the final tier, which is like a little coven, and that is the Cemetery Witches. So if you enjoy YouTube, my YouTube and Instagram, then this will be just a, a, a comfy home for you, a second home for you. There will be longer content because obviously you're restricted on Instagram with, you know, the amount of information you can get out and there will be exclusive content. So there will be things on there that I do not feature um, on my page. So, for example, I've got lots of in interesting people to interview that can tell you a little bit about their magical lives, their magical experiences. I'm really excited actually. Um, I've got some great content to bring you. So there will be interviews, reviews, 
community spells and altars. So for example, that might be spells that we all take part in together that I've written and planned and you just have to gather a few bits and we'll do them together or a community altar. So for example, if I am going to do um, some sort of magical working for healing, then you will be able to pass me your petitions, you'll be able to send me something and I will include you in that magical working. That was something that I really, really wanted to do but I wanted to be really careful with the energy of that and I didn't necessarily want to open that up completely to Instagram with a million people that I didn't know. So, because I think that, you know, things can quickly be diluted. Not everyone always has the right intentions. Not that we'll be doing any particular sort of like, you know, edgy spell work or anything like that. I'm going to make sure it's safe. But again, I thought that that sort of commanded a slightly more private audience. Um, there's going to be live hangouts um, and there's going to be things like occasional gifts and surprises, handwritten letters. It depends what tier you're in as to which benefits you receive. But come Monday, go and have a look at my website. The link will be in my Instagram bio. So it's easy to find if you're on there. But it's just basically the cemeterywitch.co.uk and you will find pages on everything that I'm offering. And then on those pages, you will find links. So as part of, oh yeah, one-to-one -one mentoring, behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff. So as part of um, this Patreon, at a certain tier and upwards, I will be sending out PDFs, A4 PDFs, um, grimoire sheets. So my grimoire, my collection of information that I've put together, that I actually started in back in 1997 when I started as witch and I started recording things, lots of scraps of paper. I started to organise all this stuff when I was on maternity leave in 2007. So I started to type up and keep a digital file of all the information. And then in 2018, I think it was, I started, yeah, it was, I started to take that typed information and actually start to flower it up a bit, you know, in terms of pictures and design and stuff like that. I'm not the world's best designer, but um, visually I'm not too bad. But yeah, I wanted to just turn it from typed bits of paper in a file to actually something that looks pretty. So that will be available and that will be available in a sepia tone and in a white tone. So the background. So that actually gives you three colorways because the white background, so no background basically looks best printed onto distressed paper. And I can give you guys a recommendation for that as well. That's how I... Um, have mine. So I'm going to show you mine. So it's kind of a magical encyclopedia, probably more than a grimoire, because I've got three files worth of information here. Now it's up to you. You could either do what I do and have it running in order, or you can have the long form content split out into a folder and then just have the quick reference sheets in another. And also the idea of this is that you pick and choose from the information provided what suits you. So you create a bespoke, you create a bespoke collection of magical information that you can use. Um, as I'm getting older and my memory is really failing, it's really, really helpful. And I, I'm practical. I have mine in a, fo in a folder. It doesn't matter. You can have yours in a leather bound book and you could stick that in there. I'm just really, really practical. And I have mine in plastic wallets so that I can move it around so that I can take it into the kitchen because there are recipes and things in here. Um, so yeah, so this is my grimoire. So there are, there's a choice of front pages and also I am going to give you um, front pages for subsequent folders as well. So you really have full control of what you do with this. So on joining up, you get a 32 page grimoire starter kit. So that's like all the front pages and all the chapter pages. There'll be more to come as well. I've still got loads of information I need to sort out. And you'll get this in white and sepia. That will be on the Patreon website. So, so much stuff. So yeah. As it goes through, I'm probably not holding this very well. I can't actually see because I'm looking at the back of my phone. Ooh. So there's loads of just like information on what a witch is and what witchcraft is at the beginning. Um, 
I've got the Wiccan Reed, the Charge of the Goddess, the Charge of the God. I think I'm, from memory, I'm leaving those out. I'm leaving those out because they're not my work, so I'm not selling them. But that's the sort of thing that I'll be able to include as maybe bonus content. Um, witch's etiquette, a witch's checklist. So this is a little bit like Scott Cunningham's list, but this is actually my own checklist. So many things, candle colours for zodiac, um, magical correspondences, and they're all mine. So it's up to you whether you use them or not. You might decide to highlight the ones that you find really helpful. You can draw on this, you can add stickers. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this. You can put cartoons on it. You can add in your own pages. It's really, really up to you. Now, there was something else I wanted to say on that. There's a, there's a lady that walks her dog in the cemetery. She's not supposed to be in here. And she was just at the window sorting out her dog. So that put me off a little bit. Um, oh yes, the magical, the Cemetery Witch Magical Monthly Newsletter. So that as well is part of one of the uh, Patreon tiers. There is just so much going on. So take a look on Monday. It would be really amazing if you could join me. If not, perhaps share me. That would be fantastic. It's really, really hard now. Excuse me, I'm talking too quickly and taking in too much air. It's really, really hard now with all of the social media platforms, with their algorithms to be seen. So even just a share, I would so appreciate as I try and get this launched, I would like to get this in front of as many eyes as possible, just so that people can see that it is available. Um, I'm not a competitive person, but weirdly, I wanna have like the biggest Patreon. I, there's, there's a few witches on Patreon. Um, and I kind of feel like I want to beat them, so which is really childish. But anyway, I think it's just excitement, to be honest. It's just pure excitement and um, a little bit of pride as well. Like, I'm proud. I have worked really, really hard at this. It's taken me way, 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 way longer than it would the average person due to some of the health issues that I've had that have set me back no end. But equally, if it wasn't for those, then I wouldn't be able to do this. I would probably be, you know, in a in a job somewhere that well, I would I would be a holistic therapist, I would be doing that, wouldn't I? But yeah, I feel like everything has kind of worked out the way that it has because this is my calling and I'm supposed to be doing this. So next thing, Etsy. So I've just given you the history on the grimoire sheets. I'm gonna feature those on Etsy as well. So you'll just be able to buy and download those, but there isn't the choice of the sepia. So on Patreon, you'll just be given the white and the sepia. You don't even have to sort of state which one you want. You don't have to pick one, you get both. On Etsy, I'm only offering the white background um, forms, the um, grimoire pages. Uh, and again, I've, all my notes here, I've got things to tell you about, I've already covered. So the history of my grimoire sheets, um, yeah, and how the grimoire works, you know, it's like a magical encyclopedia, you can decide how you want to do it. So if you want to have a look, a further look at the grimoire sheets, because you're thinking of joining Patreon, then go over to Etsy and have a look at them on there. You'll be able to see the full range. You will, on Patreon, um, get extra bits that aren't available to buy in it via the Etsy one, via the Etsy shop. Um, there's gonna be all sorts of bits and bobs on there that you can't get elsewhere. So it is, it's worth checking out the Patreon. Also to Etsy, they're not available yet. I haven't had a chance to, to get this bit done as well. Um, and we've had so much going on here. Eventually, I am bringing back my coloured spell kits, which you guys loved, and also my witchcraft um, sort of supplies and starter kits. I did try all these a couple of years ago when I first had this intention to do this. I had a shop, I had it open for about a month, and then I closed it because I could not physically keep up with. I basically burnt myself out in preparing all of this and I think that even though I had le less health problems then than I do now and I had a lot then I think that I am much more resilient now and I'm finding better ways of working sort of a bit smarter rather than harder so 
I need to go back over like how much everything costs to create those because everything has gone up so much in price that I need to make sure that when I'm selling those, I'm going to then be able to rebuy the bits and bobs back in to make them because they are really, really popular. Um, you guys did really like those, but that needs just a little bit more work that I just haven't had the time for. I do go to bed really, really early a lot of nights to have the energy to you know, even attempt to do any of this. So this has been a very, very long work in progress. And it's just, yeah, I guess it's taken a passion, a hobby, not a hobby, hobby is the wrong word, an interest, a passion, a passion. Um, and I have, you know, managed to eventually turn it into something else because this is what I need to be doing. You know, I've spent so many hours thinking about my calling in life. Why am I here? What should I be doing? And this is it. So next thing, courses. I, I never planned to do courses. I never wanted to do courses. Um, I used to teach card making and scrapbooking and I used to love doing that. Absolutely love doing that, but it never occurred to me to do courses. Um, and then I hit 40 and then I got a little bit sort of involved in a mo local moot, I was going to say local loop, in a local moot and, you know, occasionally I would like lead and really, really enjoyed that. And I, I thought back to when I was like 18 and going to like the Children of Artemis do's and then I started at a moot and, you know, I had people that were in their 40s that were sort of like would teach me things. And I've realised that I've now got to that age and it's up to me now to pass on the information. So I have designed a home study course for you at the moment. Um, I'm not well enough yet to be able to teach and stand and talk for a couple of hours. And that's, yeah, that's something that I would like to evolve perhaps into. But ultimately I thought, do a home study course. People can just do it at their own time. They might not want to get involved with other people. And that's the way that I like to study as well sometimes. So this will be available for you to download and print. There are exercises, suggested reading, activities, and questions to help you with your learning. There's 328 pages. This is one on protection magic. And I've got a witchcraft and magic course in the making. I've like, I've nearly written it, but it just needs some bits added to it. And I'm going to do one on aromatherapy as well because I am a clinical aromatherapist. So yeah, so that's really, really exciting. That will be available from Monday as well. And then we've got merchandise which you guys already know about, but that will be available from Monday. So everything is available from Monday. Eventually, when I get myself fixed and I can stand up for longer than I can without feeling like I'm gonna pass out or actually pass out because of my heart, I will look at bringing some holistic therapies back. I haven't done them in years. Um, I'm not sure as my EDS is worsening, whether that is something that I'm definitely going to be able to do, but I'll definitely be able to offer Reiki up again. So that will be coming back. And I would really, really love to eventually go back to tarot reading as well. So I used to read many, many years ago, many years ago, and then it got neglected and I moved area so I didn't have my contacts anymore that I used to read for regularly. I used to do little parties and stuff. And then I got poorly and really, really suffered with my memory and cognitive issues. And yeah, I mean, I don't get, I don't do tarot enough. I have started to do more recently. So when I feel like I've got that back to where I would like it to be, then and only then will I offer out tarot readings. But that is something I would really, really like to do. That is a goal for the future. So that will be coming as well at some point. So yeah, it's all very exciting. You probably guessed most of this because I have been open and I have shown you stuff over the years. Um, but yeah, it's all finally come together and it will be available on Monday, which I'm really, really excited about. And I just really need to thank you guys, all of you for supporting me, not just in a way in terms of like watching my videos and being there on Instagram and sharing me and likes and comments and all of that kind of stuff, but actually 
properly supporting me as a community, like being there for me. Um, you guys know that I've been really, really struggling. And this last year, in terms of my health, has been the worst year of my life. It's been so hard. And when I look back and I think that I used to like run and used to go to the gym and all this stuff that I now simply can't do, I'm still not sorted. You know, even just going up the stairs, I'm like getting out of breath. And I don't mean an unfit out of breath. I mean, because my heart's working so hard and it's even hard to breathe lying down sometimes. So, yeah, it's been a real struggle. But you guys have been so patient and understanding. And I've just hit like, even though physically, you know, I can't do a lot and I'm like, sat here and even though I've got a headache most of the time and I'm dizzy most of the time and I'm sometimes I pass out and stuff like that or I get close and I've just found this resolve this inner resolve that you know I I'm just so driven like I need to do this I want to do this and it's only with the support of you guys that have shown me love and care and understanding and respect and things like that I'm so lucky I'm so very lucky so yeah I just want to thank you all and um yeah this is just something i want to give back to you make services available to you through me because you guys really really deserve it so thank you so much and yeah i'm going to finish now because it's like i'm doing some kind of embarrassing oscars speech but anyway we're going to do some cards now uh thank you so much if you took part this week on picking a card wow that went crazy i know it would i knew it would and it's really hard because you want to give a reading to absolutely every person that puts their name down. But yeah, it's just, again, trying to give a little bit back um, in the ways that I can. So thank you, everybody. Tell me how your week's been. I know I still haven't got through my comments, but now you know why, because I've been working on this and you wouldn't just believe how much thought it takes you know, even just launching something, you know, to connect everything to something else, to make sure you've mentioned this, to make sure you've mentioned that, because it's easy to forget when you're not the person reading it, it's easy to leave stuff out so that people don't know. And then, you know, of course, if you launch something, you've got to, you've got to physically show that you've launched it. So you've got to create materials for that. So there's just been so much going on. And then obviously I've been contacting people to take part in interviews and to showcase them over on Patreon. So yeah, it's it's been a very exciting time. It means I've not slept very well at all this week and last week. So, and also just through other circumstances, this, um, this had to come in, into being a little bit quicker than perhaps previously planned. So I was not expecting to release it on April the 1st. Um, I was expecting it to be much, much later. So yeah, it's, yeah, it hasn't been rushed, not by any means, because I've obviously been working on this for quite a long time, but um, certainly I did not expect it to be birthed now. So yeah, that, that threw me a little bit of a curveball. But yeah, there we go. So, I picked three cards today. Again, like we were doing four for a while, but last week I felt like three and today I feel like three. So we've obviously shifted number. So we've got the four of swords. We have got the nine of wands and we have got temperance. So it feels very much like um, you're feeling maybe a bit battered and bruised, a bit exhausted with things. You know, it's been a long journey with something and you are almost, as well as like nearly being at the point of completion, you're nearly at the point of giving up. And my advice would be to you, don't give up. Take a rest, take a rest. You will feel much better. Don't sack it. That would be the worst thing to do. Take a rest instead. Even the most battle-hardened warriors get exhausted, they get tired, they get overwhelmed, they get frustrated, they get to the point where they feel like giving up on something. And I'm saying, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Take a break just for a little while, get your breath, gather your thoughts, and then you can get back to it. And when you do, try and be less extreme, try and take the middle path a little bit more. It's possible that you're feeling this way because you've just basically, you've overdone it and you've overwhelmed yourself. 
So moderation is key. It's great to go at something with full force. Of course it is. It's great to have enthusiasm. It's great to just throw yourself completely at something, but you have to be aware of your own limitations. I'm, I am realise now, as I'm saying all this, that I need to take this advice as well. This is good advice for everybody. Take a rest, gather yourself, lay down, like literally lay down. <laughs> lay down, switch off, get off social media for a week, do whatever it is you need to do to combat those feelings of exhaustion, and overwhelm and then when you're ready get back on the horse get back on the horse but be moderate don't be so extreme don't throw yourself at something quite so hard don't share yourself out quite so much keep a little bit in reserve and then proceed forwards and that hopefully you should have, you should avoid getting to this stage again so yeah that's my advice for the week I will be taking it myself the first chance that I get to have a little bit of a rest. I'm going to, I'm going to have a lie-in one morning. Um, yeah, all very exciting. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry it was a long one today and we didn't cover lots of topics. We'll be back next week to do that. Um, but I just wanted to give you the full lowdown on everything, where we're at. And yeah, so here is to... The Cemetery Witch opening and for you guys having a lovely space to interact in and sort of feel safe in and have fun in and have some, you know, some bonus goodies. You guys deserve it. So thank you ever so much for watching. Have an awesome week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll be back on the 5th of April. All right. Lots of love. Bye.